and feel sleepy. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> ah! Hello and welcome back to Source Fed Nerd with your daily dose of table talk where we talk about your questions, topics, just things and stuff that you recommend on Twitter and Facebook using the hashtag table talk and also on reddit.com slash r slash sourcefed. My name's Philip DeFranco. I'm Joe Beretta. And I'm Trish Hirschberger. <sighs> do we have to do it again? No, we no. just don't know which way we have to do, do it. A slight hookup. Why again? do we have to do it again? Uh, da, 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 da. We're jumping right in, kids, for your benefit. I always benefit. feel like you read from left to right, so it's middle of the way this way. I don't know. Does that make sense? From the Reddits, Mega Florence asks, "How do you fam? How do you? How do you families feel about your current line of employment? So, how do your families feel about your current line of employment?" <laughs> uh, my parents and family have always been super supportive of everything I've done, even though it's all been kind of on in the online world right from the start. They may not understand it, but mm-hmm. they enjoy it. And the nice part about what we do is that, unlike many jobs, most jobs, they can live far away and still see my exploits on a daily basis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they dig it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Yeah, definitely. Um, my parents really like the fact that, you know, even if my mom didn't talk to me on the phone that specific day, she can still, like, leave me a voicemail that's like, really liked your earrings today. She feels like she's completely connected because she can see me every day. But that being said, I also get phone calls that are like, really liked your earrings today. Please don't use the F word. <laughs> so. I think all the so girls get that a lot. I think the <laughs> parents uh, get on her about some of her choice language. Your parents, I don't know about Meg's mom or dad. Maybe. And I, I try to be pretty conservative. So that's what I'm like, mom, you can't yell at me. Like, I'm really pretty good. You need to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've talked about this before. My parents didn't like everything at first uh, because it does seem like a crazy, crazy pipe dream. But then when it paid off, they were like, yeah, oh, I love Supported that. Supported you, you the whole time, son. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the only other times I'll get calls where it'll just be like, uh, so you're way too open about stuff. <laughs> and also, it, something didn't happen like that you said in the past. And I'm like, I don't remember a lot of shit, but I remember my emotional scars. So thank you. Yes, <laughs> well, I do know how it Well, the way you remembered out. it. Yes, I know. Yeah, there's three remember versions. the way it affected you. Yes. More than anything. Yes, yes, yes. So you but were like little kid Walt question. Disney. Don't draw cartoons. It's okay that you draw cartoons. It's okay. Yeah, I can't think of any <laughs> negative, negative backlash at all from family members. So. Oh, this is an it's interesting an one. one. Uh, Christopher Dolan says, do you consider yourself a celebrity? How has SourceFed changed your personality? I'll let you guys answer this one again first, too. Do I consider myself a celebrity? No. That's the first part. I do not. Um, uh, change your personality? Has it changed my personality? I don't think so. I think I'm, I've been very... Uh, very good about uh, being really realistic about what we do. Mm. How's up? Uh, we choose to put ourselves in front of the camera, mm-hmm. and we choose to put ourselves out there in that world. And I've, I've talked about this before. Some people do it in different ways. Mm-hmm. I don't do. I don't put my life out there and my family like right. most mm-hmm. bloggers do. Uh, so I've kind of avoided that side of it. Totally. Um, and I've only put myself out there until I started SourceFed in sketches and different characters and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I would say even. Even here, it's probably not 100% me all the time. Uh, you do put on a face sometimes. I would say even you do sometimes in the PDS. Uh, you mean if you're having a really bad day and you're like, gotta, gotta can that yeah, bad day uh, and make it And because it of that, I've always day. had that fourth wall and I feel, but I also feel like we have a connection to our audience that is a little less celebrity and it's almost more it's friendly. Conversational. Yeah, it's yeah. friendly conversational. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That, and you've been doing it forever, Joe. Yeah. So I don't know if I quite answered the question, but I don't I don't feel like we are celebrities. No, no. I definitely don't feel like I, I feel like if you're a celebrity, it's like you can't go to McDonald's and get something there without people mobbing you. Um, and kind of like Joe said, you know, I definitely feel like it's more of a, a friendly relation and less of a I mean, I, that's how SourceFed has changed my life for me is I just feel like I have a ton more friends now, even if they're friends that I only connect with over social media. Um, and that's been really cool. And it's also, and I know I've said this before, but it's also been a really big, um, like, kind of confidence booster for me because we are putting ourselves out there. We're putting our opinions mm. out there. And you get the negative and the positive feedback, and it's it's made me really just be okay with who I am. The celebrity both. of YouTube culture is more of a, a job slash life choice. <laughs> because the audience interaction is important. And mm-hmm. the fact that we are we're constantly up keeping track of things on the Twitter and the Reddits mm-hmm. and YouTube itself and having an ongoing conversation mm-hmm. outside of videos and in videos, uh, I think it, it takes it to a different level. That's why I don't call it celebrity. Like you said, it's more of like a... Uh, there's like an osmosis going on, a transfer of, of both sides at all times. So it's a little less... I think it's more connected than, mm-hmm. than typical celebrity. Yeah, I feel like uh, I learn every day from other people, like tons of other people that I would never have the opportunity to speak with. And there's an ongoing from. dialogue in the realm that we're in that I don't think it exists in 
television, movie, music, mm-hmm. traditional celebrity. But that is starting to change because we're seeing people do. We're seeing traditional celebrities do that stuff mm-hmm. now. They're getting on Twitters and they're they're Zach Braff is vlogging and getting uh, Will Wheaton yeah. getting in this mm-hmm. world a lot more. And I think they're trying. They're starting to understand that there's more to to entertainment yeah. these days uh, than just uh, than just performing and then taking in the yeah, roses I'll, I'll and say, the applause. I say that I agree with you guys in general. I think there's a point where it becomes obnoxious to say that you're not a celebrity. And I'm going to also preface or add that I don't consider myself a celebrity. If I, if anything, I consider myself a, a businessman. That's like where I try to keep my head at, mm-hmm. um, and just a, a semi-normal person. Otherwise, I'll go insane. Uh, but like, if you have a uh, a pootie pie, who like my show gets, or rather my channel gets like four to six million views uh, a week, right? That guy gets 48 million That's pretty views crazy. a week. <laughs> That's a um, so Tell it doesn't me. matter if he feels like a celebrity; he is a celebrity. Yeah. Right. There are also other tubers uh, because, I mean, we're going to see people. And also, I want to intersplice this footage uh, with you meeting a shit ton of people at VidCon. Because oh. it will kind of tink, tink away at what we just said. But mm-hmm. there are also people that consider themselves celebrities uh, and then say the exact same things of, well, they're not my viewers. They're not my fans. They're my friends. And it pisses me off a lot. Okay. I'm not going to throw any names out there. Um it is this very, I mean, I'm very cynical about the whole YouTube community thing on some aspects, but uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to end that. <laughs> well, you've been in it for you. a while, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see people change yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot. Like I said, that's where I think the life choice part of it comes in. Yeah. You're making that choice, and yeah, we'll, go, mm-hmm. we'll leave it at that. Okay. Fun Bags for Sale from Reddit says, what are some movies you think would have been way better if they were directed by someone else? <laughs> um, Can I say Transformers without getting beat up? What? Really? Yeah. I Transformers was, by who? Yeah, who's going to do that movie? I don't know. I would have loved to have seen it more serious. So, like, the blanket less, answer like, for just everything fun is, commercial. like, like just Nolan. let David Fincher direct uh, everything. I was say Nolan. <laughs> Nolan, <laughs> Nolan would be everything. a good one, too. <laughs> Nolan um, Transformers. I would have been super interested, and I was kind of bummed when he dropped out. Guillermo del Toro doing The Hobbit. Okay. I think that would have been astounding. It would have been darker. It would have been grittier. Uh... I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but The Hobbit didn't quite do it for me. And I think if Guillermo did it, it would have brought a, a, a new feel to it. It would have been great. It took me 10 years to realize that uh, Guillermo del Toro and Benicio del Toro were different people. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> that's a thing. Because I don't, I don't, that's a thing. I don't remember directors' names for the most part. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you have like the Michael Bay's because, you know, he comes up in pop culture all the mm-hmm. time and yeah. he is pop culture, mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah. Um, but as far as movies directed by different people, maybe, uh, maybe Super Mario Bros. Back yeah, in the day, uh, cool. made made it so I could still 100% love John Leguizamo rather than only 90%. <laughs> yeah. What would a what he would a Nolan Super Mario Bros look like? Say so what? What would a Nolan Super Mario Bros look like? A Nolan? It would be <laughs> awesome. Are you kidding me? It would be a plumber. He, he wouldn't actually go like the underworld would be like a CD drug yeah. organization yeah. in the sewer. Uh, and then everyone would be high out of their minds. I'm and, into and just it. Mushrooms. I, I, that's, that's what I would like. Uh, I would have loved to have seen AI, which is a weird movie that mm-hmm. is not mm-hmm. great, but I still love it. It's one right, of my yeah. favorite Spielberg movies, and when I watch it, I can't help but not get away. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm transfixed, and I'm like, this is not great, but I can't stop. Haley Joel, real emotions? <laughs> uh, I don't know. But if I would love to have seen, um, oh my god. Kubrick. Oh, I just went, whoosh, thank you. Uh, Kubrick's version of it. I wish I could have seen that from beginning to end. Because... AI, AI was a good movie. I thought you were talking about iRobot. And I was like, I, it was an okay film. It was an okay film, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that, like, you got that Spielberg ending. You got like three in a row. And, like, right? got ha- it was supposed to be dark. Uh, and then it got happy and happier and then kind of weird. Kind of maybe a happy ending. But if it was Kubrick, god dang. Who knows where it would have went with it. It would have been... Crazy mind fuck. Yeah. So good. Do we all get it? I think we all got it. That's back to you. Did. Look at this. We're just rocking them. Did you say one? Do it. Do you have any? You said one, right? I, I threw out a couple. I, I, well, oh, I said Michael Bay Transformers, but I'm completely engulfed in this Nolan Mario Brothers thing now. <sighs> Philip DeLong oh, I was like, no, I didn't. from the Twitter says, What do you guys think about Zac Efron being a potential candidate for the role of Han Solo's son in Star Wars 7? Where's that guy been? Where has Zac Efron Zach, been? He's been around. He, he was in that. Little... He was in that movie where he was like, the paper... oh, oh yeah, he just did Paperboy. That's exactly what? where he was. Yeah, did Paper you Boy. see that? It was the one where he was. Uh, he was Super betting. Uh, he was betting Nicole, Nicole Kidman. Kidman. 
She was like an older lady. Oh, I think it's like betting. It's supposed to be uh, betting like boink boink. No, I, th- I heard. Okay, I'm gonna throw it out here right now. Uh, one of my biggest complaints with uh, the acting world in Hollywood right now is that I feel like we don't have any up and comers that are the voice of that generation, that class. I think the closest thing we've had to the, the the new round of the Robert De Niro's and the Dustin Hoffman's of the world is a generation ahead, and that's the Leonardo DiCaprio's and the mm-hmm. Matt Damon's and the Edward Norton's. I don't feel like this next. I read a really even interesting... Even Ryan Gosling is in that old one. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to... No, go ahead. I'll go right back. But uh, I will say, and I'll probably get a lot of shit for this, there are not many in the Zac Efron uh, right. age group, but I consider Zac Efron one of them. I agree with I you. I think he's really good. I agree with you. I read I read an article, um, I think it was in The Hollywood Reporter, I'm not sure though, um, that was saying that the reason we have no up-and-coming stars of that generation is completely financial, and it's the studios are doing it on purpose. As long as they don't keep a star that they have to pay star prices, and everyone can kind of, like they keep an action movie that they know will do well regardless, mm-hmm. and they can put anyone in it, they can pay them less. I think they're also casting based off of looks instead of talent these days. Like, looks yeah. is the 75% margin of why you cast somebody and then 25% is talent. And that's why we're getting all these pretty faces and stuff. Like yeah, and Taylor I mean, Lautner's of the world. And Zac Efron. was in that one movie that was like Jason Bourne, but <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if exactly. it was because I didn't watch it. Yep. Uh, uh, but Zac yeah, I mean, Efron some pe- is really pretty. Yeah, but some people are going to be, uh, they're going to be cast specifically because of their following. Uh, yeah. Lindsay's like randomly friends with people on TV shows. Uh, and uh, they said like a lot of the movie stuff um, the reason it goes to specific people is all of those people have around the same core of agents. And uh, so, and yeah, so that like, makes deals. sense. Right, because, I mean, Jennifer Lawrence is amazing. She's but, awesome. like, she's also in that, like, yep. that spiel of, like, how do you go from Winter's Bone to one of the biggest franchises the ever. Games, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. I mean, the, the Hemsworths are, I think, another two that are pretty good. I, I like them. Uh but Jennifer Lawrence is a, is a female version. I think there's probably more strong female actresses than there are males right now. Emma Stone is one of the Emma Stone's few great. ones that's out there uh, Andrew now. Garfield. Could I really like that. Andrew Garfield. He would be great. Uh, but Zac Efron as Hans. Sure, why not? He's got some swagger. I'll, I'll, I I'll watch like him. him in stuff that he does, especially recently. I feel like he's doing a good job of breaking out of that pretty boy role and taking on some meatier, grittier roles. Like and what will also be nice is that J.J. Abrams is a great director, and he gets mm-hmm. performances out of children that blow adult performances out of the water. So uh, imagine maybe if J.J. Abrams had done the first three prequels. Hmm. Like, imagine if it was him instead of Lucas, who is notoriously not... Not a great director. At that least was an interesting we, reaction. At least we wouldn't have. I said all oh, because I hate the I killed them, I killed them all monologue. I, oh. the, I feel like the acting was so poor in it. I actually laughed out loud in the theater. And it's not a funny part. At um, <laughs> but that's why I'm like, oh, it would have been so nice if like a good performance could have been Think pulled if out. JJ of that. directed Jar Jar. There's an, there's an actor I'm trying to just get the name. I'm not ignoring you. Um, he has a really important tweet he has to send. Right? No, Hayden, no, no, no. Christensen, <laughs> Hayden Christensen's not a bad actor. Is that who you're thinking of? Hayden, Hayden Christensen? Christensen was good in Jumper and good in a bunch of the other things, Glass Howard, or whatever that thing was. And uh, George go. Lucas couldn't direct him. Well, and that's as an actor, I always feel bad for the actors because I can, I, I feel like I can see when it's like, oh, the director just did, oh, because they do look like they're bad actors. Mm-hmm. And, Dude, those movies made Natalie Portman look like a bad actress. So she's great. So this kid, uh, Dane DeHaan, is actually one of my favorite he's great. comers. Yep. Uh, he, but he was also he was. It's hard to say that because he's been in some fucking amazing movies. I just saw uh, the place beyond the beyond the pines. Oh yeah. Oh, I knew who you're talking about. Uh, he's he amazing he, in Chronicle. He, Chronicle. He was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like it was Carried one of the first the times. Like yeah, that I was like, oh, I understand this. Like essentially what it would be as yeah. an origin story, even though it's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was awesome. Fun uh, fact about that is that I, when I worked at The Griddle, which is a pancake place, Max <laughs> Landis would come in and eat sometimes. He was the writer of it, and now he's directing some movies. And we were talking about it when it was in the script process. He's like, oh, I'd like you to check out my script. It's really dark. And he's like, there's this one part where, you know in the movie, he uses his power and he separates the spider? See, that was supposed to be foreshadowing. It was supposed to be a much darker movie. For so when he was in the basement fighting his dad, he was going to take his dad and go and yeah. pull him apart like an anatomy chart. Oh! The, the studio made him change it. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, also, Place Beyond the Pines was awesome. I haven't seen it yet, but I want to. Really? Yeah, amazing movie. You don't know where Not the fuck it's going. Not what I expected going. at all. No, you don't know where the what fuck I it's going. What I got from the trailer, it was like the first 20 minutes of the movie, and then I had no idea what Oh, God, I now I'm excited. I want to see it. Expecting. All right, and we're going to go out on the last one. It's a life or death question by Seymour Harry Butts. Good job on that. Okay. One. Uh, what was the one time you actually thought you were going to die? That's not a lie. Uh, that's we, just a death question. That's just um, a death. <laughs> we did hey. that. We did this yesterday. It's all it's inherently together. 
Guys, we're weaving right. a Guys, loom of we are stars. experience. Boys, <laughs> we did this question by Seymour Harry Butts yesterday. Oh, you did? I don't care then. They didn't answer because it. Because we didn't answer it. Okay. Answer. When did you Wait, almost when, tell yeah, it? Yeah, tell it again. Just um, <laughs> well, Meg, yeah. Steve, and I all agreed that it was mostly car accident experiences. Oh, like, right. right before you get into a car accident and you accept the fact that it's coming, you're like, mm. this is it. I, c I could be dead right now. I can say three right off the top of my head, and they all revolve around one kid that I was growing up with. Uh, his name was Matt Cuff. The first time we went and snuck on a, a floating trampoline, I might have told this story before, in a lake at like two in the morning at somebody's private property, we're jumping on it. Turns out lake trampolines aren't that fun, so we swam underneath it and swam. Oh! And I oh. got lost underneath the, the rubber part of it. Somehow I got disoriented just swimming to the middle open part, and I came up right in the middle of mm -hmm. the section, and I didn't know which way to go, so I started going this way, losing my breath, and it was still above me, so I freaked out and returned and started going the other way. Did that like three times, about to, I was about to lose my breath, and I finally came up, so that's when I almost died, number one. Wow. Two, we're on a mountain pass going camping up in the Hungry Horse Reservoir, and it turned into a gravel <laughs> road, and he was going way too fast. Matt Cuff was driving. Uh, rock wall here, sheer uh, edge of the road yeah. here, going down to, to wooded area. We pull a 180 to avoid. We, we're going into the the rock wall. We pull a 180 turn on the gravel road. We lose control and we start sliding. So my window is going to go down on this side of the incline, and our car stopped right like this. <gasps> and right below where my window would have hit was a jagged tree stump about this wide, sticking straight up. Would have slammed right into my face. Oh my god! Third time Matt Cuff almost killed me <laughs> was uh, attempted murder. Okay. <laughs> We were camping at the spot that we finally got to, and he brought his paintball gun, and out of nowhere, he's like, ha ha, he lifts it up and he shoots it at me, but it turned out he there was a rock in the barrel. Oh my god! Flew past my head, broke a window. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm Dude, gonna get you Joe, someday. Dude, you're so that lucky is to be alive. I'm gonna get you someday. Uh, yeah, so I've almost, uh, there's other stories, I almost died a lot. Please don't die, Joe. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I only have, I feel like I have three moments. One, I was a child and there was just, it's like the fear of other people, angry, drunken stepfather. There was a very scary incident. Ooh. Two was, uh, sorry to go to a dark place. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, two, uh, when I crashed, uh, my most recent accident, which was, uh, I was in my, uh, my RX-8 and it slid and it's just that moment of like, oh, I don't have control and there's mm -hmm. nothing I can do. Yeah. Yep. Or maybe there is, but I'm not smart enough to know. And <laughs> I just like, I did a 180 Break. and I was uh, right backwards. Uh, and, uh, oh. and so that was, I thought I was dead. That's so scary. Uh, and then actually the, the third time was, uh, I, w I don't know if I was scared of death and or uh, just physical harm. I was, uh, I was out in the desert with Richard Ryan uh, <laughs> shooting stuff and blowing stuff up. And it's like out in like, you should only feel safe with Richard Yeah, that Ryan. man only so, makes you feel safe. Yeah, that man only makes you feel safe, but we're shooting stuff, I'm blowing stuff up, it's awesome. Uh, we helped them pack up, but they're gonna stay for like another 30 minutes. I, I was like, but I, I was like, I gotta get home. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, it'll be really easy. Uh, I punch in the GPS. Uh, turns out when you're in the middle of the desert, uh, the, 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 GPS also, yes. the GPS also sees uh, dirt bike paths as roads you can go on. Uh, so I go three miles into the oh, desert the wrong no. way. Is it nighttime? Uh, it's nighttime. It's pitch dark. And it's just like one of those moments where you're like, oh, shit, this isn't where I came. But I can probably get back to where I need. But I can't turn around because it's so narrow. And <laughs> so and I, I'm, I'm in my Challenger, which is not supposed nope. to be for off-roading. It's off got a clearance of, uh, about that. Yeah. And oh, so my it's just like, God. And oh, my just, God. And there's just some, like, stuff that's, like, crazy. But I end up going, like, several miles out, and it's pitch dark. Uh and I have like 5% phone battery, I have like a quarter tank of gas, and I'm like freaking out, yeah. and there's like, there's no cell signal to one bar, and it just keeps going back and forth, and I'm like calling Richard Ryan for an hour, Help on, me. On, until he finally gets me, and he's like, you have a GPS, put in your coordinates, and uh, and like while I'm doing it, the cell signal drops again, and I'm like trying to get it, uh, and it's, it becomes this whole process of like I finally get him the GPS coordinates, and it takes him like an hour and a half to he find me. He came and found you, and then oh, he wow. like led me out, and I was just like I'm gonna get stuck in the desert, and I don't know even when it's like morning, I don't know how the fuck how? I'm gonna get out of this. That's gotta and, be the scariest thing. And there's like thing. and along the way, and they're probably like sweet families, but you don't know these people. Mm -hmm. They're just like random oh, fucking like people. Hills have there's just random yeah. people in the middle of that are like oh. shooting shit. Yeah. Oh. And you're just like, this is the scariest fucking, I'm so out of my element right now. Uh, so that was probably, that was like more of the dread fear. That Richard I, Ryan uh, was your desert Sherpa of salvation. Dude, he saved me. <laughs> Richard Ryan saved me. <laughs> uh, Ryan. But that's what that's what I'm going to end on. Richard Ryan being we're the best alive. person ever. Woo. And we're all alive. And Yay. when your cell phone dies out, everybody loses control and thinks they're going to die. Yeah, well, it's just that's that moment of like, 
every time you're like watching a movie, like a scary movie, and you're like, oh really? No, your cell phone's gonna die. You didn't bring a charger, dick. And then it's just like, no, it's happening. It's all beginning. Uh, but that's, what I, that's that's where I'm gonna end. I'm uh, running out of Fuji water. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Do I have backup caviar? It's okay. Just run upstairs. Uh, Every everything that's bad. Oh, it's like in the desert. Yeah, just run upstairs in the that's, desert. That's how you get to safety. Yep. Mm-hmm. If you have other questions and topics and other things you want to judge us on, use uh, Table Talk <laughs> hashtag on Facebook and Twitter or go to reddit.com slash r slash sourcefed. My name's Philip DeFranco. Joe Beretta. I'm Trish Hershberger. Let's <laughs> <laughs> did it right. <laughs> we did it. Yay. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Say your names before you go. Yep. What's we'll, your name? We'll wait. Mm-hmm. Darren. Darren. Oh. Best I know. <laughs>